So welcome to my site everybody. My name is Paul and I talk a lot about perception and esoteric psychology. And if you're curious about my own personal journey, watch some of my other videos and a little bit about me. I traveled a lot and I was born in India and I started at an early age. I learned about meditation and I started practicing in about 1973. So I've had a particular interesting journey and I share my experiences and some of my knowledge. And I often talk about self-discovery because essentially as human beings that's what we're here for I mean we're not here for a very long time and we don't want to just collect a bunch of things and then die we need to find out who we are and and this process of what our existence is all about so <clears throat> along the way in a personal journey like the one I've had I asked a lot of questions myself and the teachers that I listened to talked a lot about looking within and knowing oneself and so on and so I started on a journey and I learned I read a lot of different books about esoteric psychology and consciousness and perception and so on and I'll share a few of them with me today here now the one concept that I've talked about is that the esoteric concept is that this consciousness this universe is conscious that's all it is essentially <clears throat> and there are lots and lots of different infinite ways of consciousness to express itself and we can see evidence of that even on this planet here and if we look out in the universe and the cosmos you realize there must be an awful lot of various kinds of awarenesses out there and many of them we probably don't even have any clue about and we'll never know in, in our entire lifetime so we go from some of the ancient teachings and we listen to what they said and the mythology and so on and it's very very helpful and I've shared a lot of different books with you and my other viewers and one of them is the Upanishads. This is a very very ancient book. Nobody really knows how old it is. It was recorded down at some point in writing but it was a long oral tradition and back in the day when the, the Sanskrit language there was a a certain tonality that you pronounced and each tone had a meaning <clears throat> in addition to a you know some other kind of context and so on so <clears throat> it's a very profound teaching and nobody really is assigned any particular credit for it, no particular person and I want to read to you a little bit about what they the concept of the self the capital self the the one consciousness <clears throat> The mystery of all our existence and everything and even science gets solved. You get a lot more clues and understanding when we come to the conclusion as many of the ancient sages have through a practice of meditation and whatever that the universe is inherently conscious and that we cannot separate our own awareness from the universe so that the way to understand who we are is to practice some internal <clears throat> perception and using the mechanisms of our own physiology, the body, the, the chakras, whatever, all that to engage on the subtle level with our own existence in a very, very still place where we find that our awareness is, is far beyond these physical senses and when we find that out that we are one complete being and we are like imagine being like a cell or like a jellyfish in the ocean and you're basically there's a very very thin membrane between the jellyfish and the rest of the ocean and inside the jellyfish there's a, salt, a saline solution and different kinds of life activities and so on and there's just a life form there and it's temporary for a little while and very soon after its lifespan is over it goes back into the ocean and essentially we our body our whole physiology every atom our cells every single thing in us in this what we call ourselves is really just one of those jellyfish or cells in the universe of beingness and consciousness and that the way to harmonize our psychology and have joy in our life is to understand the principle of the follow the thread of our own awareness internally where we meet <clears throat> and join and become conscious of that part of that aspect of our being people call it the psyche the God whatever 
you follow that thread in our own inner being all the way back and it gets subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler and then you just know beyond a shadow of doubt that there's a completeness there's a oneness we come from a oneness we exist in a oneness we go back to a oneness that's the that's the realization and if there's a salvation in this world or a liberation is the understanding through a direct experience not through a theory but just through a direct experience that ah ah that answered the question all the questions now another analogy I often give is that let's say you have a squirrel and the squirrel can go on the ground and dig holes and everything and it goes up and down a tree but that has its limit Whereas a bird can go, it can go down on the ground and dig a hole or crawl up all the way tree. But if the tree falls down, the tree, the bird has has flight. Our being, our soul, our true awareness is already liberated in that sense. We have essentially wings in the physiology of this human body, and the techniques that have been handed down to us and the teachings from thousands and thousands of years. That this human vehicle that we have has an opportunity through just understanding another simple example that let's say there's a bottle and it has air in it and the air inside the bottle is exactly the same as the air outside the bottle but there's a cap on the bottle and there's only one simple solution is to remove the cap whatever that limitation is and the air within the bottle becomes immediately conscious of the air that it came from and that's essentially what yoga is a union. Yoga is an understanding, a beginning of an immersion into that infinite awareness that breathes us, silently heals us, and is the foundation for our own awareness. That's why we can have a psyche. There's no separation. Essentially, what it comes down to is there's no other consciousness over there somewhere. There's no God up there somewhere. There's really no other person over there somewhere. In fact, what you are, what we think we are in our identity, whatever identity, but, but people can put on a costume and identify with that and they can go around for a whole days or weeks <laughs> and pretend they're a certain person or a certain character. But in the end, there's just that life force that is breathing that same presence that was with us when we were a baby, before we had a name, before we had anything, we were just breathing there. And when we pass out of this body, we go back to the same place. We just... Like being in the ocean, the floating... In, let's say you're in a bay on a nice little raft or something, and you're on a, a nice bay and you're floating on some nice gentle waves, that feeling where you just let go, you don't care, you just float. Essentially, when we allow ourselves in our own meditation to just float and let go of all those dedications that we have, that's where we get liberated in what we call saved. Now, I want to read this little section here about the so-called self and the Upanishads. And it says here, the question is being asked, what is about this, this self, this capital self, what is that? And he said, the teacher says, this thyself which is within all. And the student asks, which self is within all? And he says, that which breathes is thyself, that which, which is within all. That which breathes down is thyself, which is within all. That which diffuses breath is thyself, which is within all. That which breathes out is thyself, which is within all. Again I apply this thyself, which is within all. So basically, there's a oneness of our own existence, and the answer to a lot of psychological problems is to first get a bearing our, on our own true identity, who we are, because we can wear many different costumes, and sometimes the costumes that we wear, we might say we are in a period of pain in our life, or, or whatever different kinds of activities or behaviors that we get into, in that sense, we have a certain identity for a while, but when we go home, it's just like 
we wear our costume during the day and then at the home we come home and we let it go we just become all natural and essentially meditation in my experience has been a, a process of just a letting go and I've had incredible experience that you know there's it's a very personal experience what is what does peace feel like well when you feel a certain experience where there's no need to get up and there's there's a total satisfaction of all fulfillment then you know you've come home like that bird comes home to rest and a lot of psychology today gets really complicated in my opinion and it doesn't really get to the root which is basically essentially our like that air in the bottle wants to merge with the air outside every stream eventually every drop of water comes into a stream and then eventually it goes down to a river and eventually comes out to an ocean so there's a certain thirst in us in our own awareness that is so profound that we have this beautiful body and some subliminal level we know this is the gift of life this is a beautiful thing to have this is our opportunity we're not here very long and so let's have an open heart and wait and try to feel and understand this existence so that before we die before we leave this body we find our wings so that we know that hey you know it's okay because we come into this world and we are living in this body just like a glove a hand in a glove is, is we can know that the glove is not our hand the same way we can know our own being is not this body we can feel this body like almost being like a hand in a glove we just we're here we feel it it's there the body's there but it's not us in a fullest extent so I want to talk a little bit about some books that I've read here and this one here esoteric psychology you can look that up Alice Bailey there's another version uh, another volume of it I read that one too long ago I've discussed this in other books here the Upanishads which is the age-old one this is very very profound and simple and just beautiful get a nice translation of it um, the light of the soul which is again the, the commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali uh, the science of the soul the science this is a science this is a very ancient science and it's the most profound science It's called the science of all sciences the, the knowledge of all knowledges for a reason because it, it delves into our own existence and the profound experiences that we can have as a human being and answer all our own questions so that we, we know once and for all from our own experience and no theory that this is a profound existence that we're living in and we personally, each of us, can have an amazing experience while we're alive. This gives goes into all kinds of techniques and things and functions and aspects of the human thought process and mind and, and meditation and, and yoga and samadhi and different powers and abilities that come or whether they're use or no use or, and so on. A very, very profound book. I mean, this is a science, the techniques. These are practical techniques that work to help people have an experience. Then we have some more modern books here. I just browsed through this here. I just got this recently here. The Physiology of Consciousness. This is something. Again, we have, a, we have the techniques. We have the physiology in our body that is very, very profound. And this, this is modern and probably doesn't even go into the ancient yoga systems. I mean, this is just the beginning. The ancient yoga system has been around for a really, really long time and they go into very great detail of all the nerves and the various nadis and energy centers and, you know, different kinds of abilities and perceptions that people can have and so on. Then here's another book. This I haven't really read through yet, but this is an old textbook, uh, Sensation and Perception. And, you know, these are the kind of books that I like to look into and lots of people are curious about this. There is a physiology. It's amazing if you just look into what this body could actually do. It's very, very profound, you see. Now, I have another series that I've started and I'm going to talk a bit about, but I have made, started a list of like a hundred different ways of increasing our perception. And it's just, there's a goal that we have as human beings is to completely maximize our our awareness you know explore 
People want to explore the whole world. Well, it's a big place, the same way the inner world, the inner realm is their own personal journey. None of us on this planet can go explore every little corner of this planet. But we can, same way, we can't explore every little dimension within us. We have a short life here, but with the matted techniques and some inspiration, some added effort and knowledge, we can get pretty far. We can, we can certainly have a profound experience in, in this life. So about the, our perception as a whole in terms of our psychology, there's something that psychologists call the psyche. And I often kind of wondered, well, how can you define the psyche? Because you can easily put that word in a book and then you can put like a few paragraphs maybe about what the psyche is. But you can't really describe the psyche because it's kind of like we're using our own awareness to try to talk about awareness. So it's sort of like not quite complete. To, to really understand our own awareness, we have to have our own experience. And that's why the great teachers didn't just talk. They gave a, they gave a theory, the Upanishads, the Yoga Sutras, and so on. There's, there's a construct of how basically there's a unity of consciousness there's there's a unity of beingness and we are participants in it and it goes down to throughout the fabric of our being through the light energy and sound okay all that is science and technology the psychology aspect of being alive is getting to people to understand look this is possible and it's beautiful and that it'll answer a lot of questions, you see, because a lot of people hear things about yoga and Indian, they just have, they, we have these ideas about how perception has to be and how God has to be and so on. The reason that God is accessible, the reason that prayer exists is because that God is not far away because there is only one thing and that is the ultimate God essentially there is call it what you want but there's something and it's infinite and we can have speechless moments of our own and in, in perception of that we go we can have a taste of the ocean see the thing is that there's there's an ocean and where in the ocean can you say well this is the ocean because it's there's ocean all over so the same way we have our taste we bathe in that samadhi we bathe in that portion of that bliss and joy and consciousness that we can fathom in our own personal life and then when we go through our path when we leave this body we go like that bird we just float off like the evaporation from the ocean we just become part of nature again basically our consciousness we follow that all the way through through practice of meditation and it's a vast vast journey that's the beauty of it it's like we can go through a whole lifetime we can read and get inspired and there's infinite ways of manifesting the joy of realizing that liberty inside there's music and there's art and there's all kinds of incredible inventions and things that we can do and essentially the joy of life is to share this joyful moment of being alive that we can have an expanded awareness the door is within it's like it's like they say the needle you go through the thread of a needle i mean there's so many different analogies that you just have to let the awareness go down to a point and let it settle if it just like buddha said like for 15 seconds it's just let it sit there for completely motionless for 15 seconds and in your spirit you'll find yourself liberated but it's hard to uh, do for 15 seconds <laughs> but there is a lot of joy in meditation and in, in self-knowledge and in terms of psychology to try to make this brief here a lot of the problems in our lives as human beings come from our sense of identity and what we're if, if we have a low self-identity we then we're not understanding who we are as a human being we have this gift of beautiful life and every single person if you can look in the mirror you go oh my goodness I, I don't care if you got this body just wow so it's an understanding of what our potential is and who we are and what this gift of life is and that what we are is awareness 
is the most important thing because then when we become more conscious within and the beauty within and the joy within then it just starts to flow outward if you're a happy person it's not hard to love people but you try to tell people how to be happy that's first step get a little happy get get really joyful have some joy in your life and then loving people won't be so difficult so I talk a lot about perception and I give a lot of different examples and, and analogies and it's a vast subject and it's very very important subject because we have to be aware we have this opportunity time is passing you know row 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 your boat you know we never know for how far it is before you go over the waterfall you know but there's a life that we're in right now and it's flowing along it's flowing along and in this process the nice thing about in closing here that a true understanding of our our own being is not a difficult thing and this is why the great sages have taught us like it's not difficult if it was difficult it wouldn't be right if it is my it's very easy you see the thing the question is the challenge of the human perception say look just be open just just open a little bit to something new something grander and take the journey because it's so easy because it's just going from the outside to the inside is such a simple process once people have, there are people who have been shown the techniques of meditation and just go inside for, oh my God, liberation. Okay, sometimes it happens to people in a dream. Sometimes it happens to people in a near-death experience. Some frightened full experience happens. Some joyful experience happens or something, whatever. Some people just awaken. But the point is that there is a dimension of our own existence that is vast and vast and it's just like, we can experience that inner dimension simultaneously while we go through all our life. So this is a, another analogy. There. Let's say you're in a car and you have the closed windows and everything. You can see outside, but you don't really get a feel for it. And then you can open the windows and you get a dead sense of the air and everything. And then, But if you're in a convertible, you're in the car and outside at the same time in a way. So our human perception as we go along through our life and do all the activities to be open and have a, a link in a broad inclusiveness of all our own existence, all our awareness, all our emotions, and all the fullness of our own being and all the subtle perceptions that we have as one human incredible unit that's linked in that ocean of, of infinity. And it's a very simple thing. It's just a very, very, it's so simple that some of the teachers are so been hard to, to explain to people how difficult, how easy it is. Because if you look at that mirror and you just drop that, drop the eyeness for one second, just look at that awesomeness of this being that you're looking at in a mirror, or even look at a dog or a flower. They're just like you think about oxygen has to exist so you can breathe. I mean, the whole universe has to be here. So take a deep breath. And I hope I see you in some of the other videos. I talk a lot about perception and consciousness and so on. And I appreciate all the feedback. And I love to listen to other people's content. And I continue my own personal journey. And I like to share it. So thanks again for listening.